It was must scream TV. The president yelling at Americans for over an hour during one of the most hyper partisan State of the Unions. President Biden's lack of leadership was on full display in a speech designed to please his base of MSNBC flunkies and not the American people. Joe unleashing a fire hose of lies about the economy, inflation, and taxes, and still we don't know what his vision for a second term is. But we do know who he passionately hates, Donald Trump. My predecessor and some of you here seek to bury the truth about January 6th. I will not do that. Now my predecessor, a former Republican president, tells Putin, quote, do whatever the hell you want. Predecessor, 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 predecessor. My predecessor, my predecessor, my predecessor, my predecessor, my predecessor, my predecessor. But unlike my predecessor, I know who we are as Americans. Americans biggest issue of course with Biden is that he's not mentally fit for the job. But the big guy tried to brush off those concerns by joking about it. I know it may not look like it, but I've been around a while. <laughs> When you get to be my age, certain things become clearer than ever. I know the American story. Again and again, I've seen the contest between competing forces and the battle for the soul of our nation. And in one of the most shocking moments, a gold star dad getting arrested for heckling Joe Biden after reminding the president of his disgraceful exit from Afghanistan. The year before I took off, his murder rates went up 30%. 30% they went up. That man is the father of a U.S. Marine killed in the 2021 Kabul airport bombing during Biden's botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. You know, I'm going to I'm going to start with that, Greg, and I'm going to go right to you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have a Gold Star fam father and one of the Gold Star parents was on one of the other shows this week said she had never heard from President Biden. The families have not heard from President Biden. And, you know, the, their sacrifices are not remembered. They are literally sitting ducks in an open-air airport in Afghanistan. And they arrest this guy. He's charged with a misdemeanor. Well, you have to understand there are priorities, Judge, when you're doing a speech. And the amount of potato chips in your bag is way important than the deaths that occurred in Afghanistan, according to this administration. I'm going to go out and say that Joe Biden surpassed expectations. How did he do that? Well, if you're ranking him against other leaders and other politicians and other speeches, that's not what people are doing. They're ranking him against himself. So by that metric, you know, he did better than the very lowest standard possible, his own competence. He's grading on the curve of his own abysmal performances. It's kind of like being relieved that your car starts in the morning when it didn't start for a year. It's like, oh, my God, I can't believe it started. You talk about energy, and there's good and there's bad energy, and there's dark energy, and there's, en there's energy that masquerades as substance, and I think that's what you saw there. But it forces you to ask, which candidate in which party is the one that's out for revenge, right? We kept hearing, you know, that Trump is going to be out for revenge. And meanwhile, Trump is being sued by everybody, and he seems to be having a good time on X <laughs> posting memes. He seems pretty happy. On the other hand, you have an angry, fiery ball of spite, right? That sounds incredibly vengeful. And it, it, it's another example of this projection where they a accuse you of who they are, or perhaps because they become so so possessed by derangement that they become the thing they claim to hate, which I think is what's happening here. I mean, he went after the Supreme Court. You know, he attacks his predecessor and by, by connection, his supporters. But I think overall for me, you got to step back and see how mundane and futile this entire phony seriousness is. So you're going to see this. One side will cherry pick the moments of so-called clarity Oh, look, at, he had a good line there. And then the rest of us will focus on the rapid fire incoherence, the, the flailing gibberish that somehow everybody else avoids. But all this idiotic behavior is born from these stupid ancient tribes. The sweaty desperation of all these grown men on the sides of the aisles trying to get a selfie. Oh. I mean, no one wants to see those pictures. <laughs> Seriously, you're not that attractive. And it, 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 it becomes kind of this irrelevant tribal theater, which is why... Trump was so weird. 
because he came from a world of entertainment. He came from a, a world of sales, and he he stood out from that phoniness, which is what was such a surprise. He didn't fit into this fakery, and it drove them crazy. Now when you take him out of that, this is what you're left with, mm -hmm. this weird horrible game of like political pickleball where they just bounce the ball back and forth to each other and it's all the same clap 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 sit down robotically sit down clap it's just to me i found it tiresome i always have this one was perhaps even worse you know shannon i have always loved watching the state of the unions and you know i always love it because then i feel american and we're unified and i don't care if it's a democrat or a republican i want to cheer them on because it makes me feel good about being an american you've seen a lot of these state of the unions what was your take on it last night well it was strange to me that he started with ukraine yeah. and the standoff he's got with folks on on the hill because normally you do think we're here, we're Americans, we can do better, we can work together. You feel like that's going to be some of the opening message. But the fact that he went right at one of these big issues and right into foreign policy and right into combative with the people who are sitting in front of him and he's calling them out, it seemed like an odd place to start. Because the White House had been messaging to us Tuesday before the speech that there was going to be a unity agenda, that this was going to be about where people can come together. It didn't feel that way. And our latest polling, when people were asked, how's he done in unifying the country, 26% said that he's mostly succeeded, 69% say he's mostly failed. So that's across party lines. People do not think he's bringing people together. So the screaming last night, the, the speech that, of course, in an election year is going to for feel more political, didn't feel unifying. You know, Jesse, instead of talking about the state of our union, it was like a battleground campaign speech for 2024. It was. So his opening was framing himself as FDR and Lincoln. So Joe Biden is going to fight to save democracy at home and abroad against Hitler, Putin, the Southern insurrectionists, and Donald Trump. So this election, he's saying, is basically the equivalent of the Civil War and World War II combined. And he's the only one that's going to be able to protect the nation. And he puts it in these militaristic terms, like this is a military campaign, not just your regular political campaign. And then goes on to say, we swore an oath to protect the country against enemies foreign and domestic, yep. linking Trump Republicans to enemies of the state. I think most people looking around and watching this thing, this isn't really what this election's about. And so that kind of was there, as well as the screaming to prove that he was alive, mm -hmm. to show he had a little something left in the tank. And I don't really believe... He got there on his own, if you know what I mean. But then the rest of it was just red meat for the base. Abortion, big government tax and spend liberalism, and class warfare. So you get through that, and then you expect him to at least acknowledge the hardships that Americans are facing. He didn't even do that. It's all just spin. And he had a few good lines, a few volleys, which is good, but he didn't generate any sort of unity moment. He didn't invite a guest. They were adequate, but yeah. no one's buzzing about the guests he brought. So you look at some of these other speeches delivered by these presidents, and you get the chills. You know, soaring oratory, talking about the future of the country, talking about the American people in ways that are moving, Republican or Democrat. This guy just yelled at me for an hour and 15, and the worst part, Judge, he was late. That was the biggest insult. Because people are tired at 9 o'clock, and he didn't show up and speak until about 9.25. And he's not the bride. You know, it's like it, when he shows up, that's not like when the wedding starts. Like, everybody's waiting for you to get there. I thought that was the most disrespectful <laughs> part of the whole night. Well, you know, Jessica, the amazing thing is they put up all this fencing right, uh, around uh, uh, Congress. Uh, but Joe Biden is delayed because they've got all these Hamas protesters. It's like they don't even know where the problems are going to be. But it's true. I mean, you have to admit he was amped up, jacked up. It, they, they expected the speech to be an hour and a half. It was like 58 minutes because he spoke so fast. You couldn't keep him so hyped. <laughs> what was your take? It was an hour and eight minutes, I oh. think, was the, the final count. And I think the most important thing that happened last night refers to you saying is amped up. We're now talking about Joe Biden as too fiery, right, as too aggressive. And yesterday we were talking about Joe Biden can't find his pants. Joe Biden has dementia. 
Joe Biden is too old for this job. And that's how I know that it went really well, because the Republicans who have been on TV, the congressmen, senators, et cetera, people who would use the age attack are now basically saying he's a, a par an aggressive partisan who's maybe the coke was his. Maybe it's just Adderall. <laughs> that was my right? joke. Well, you didn't tell me in the green room. I no, can't. no, that's that's, oh, that's what we're I like said. the same. Yes. Oh, <laughs> um, and you also know that it went well because last night Joe Biden's campaign smashed three fundraising records at nine o'clock, at ten o'clock, and at eleven o'clock. And CNN did a poll of State of the Union watchers. Sixty-four percent had a positive view of it. Sixty-two percent said that Biden's policies will move the U.S. in a positive direction, and that's something that he was really struggling with. Mm -hmm. Trump was way ahead on that. That was up 17 points from before the speech uh, began. Starting with Ukraine also surprised me, and it felt as if he probably wanted to start with talking about attacks on democracy at home. And they thought, let's contextualize this more broadly, right, to talk about democracies that are under attack and also to put Republicans on the back foot. You saw Mike Johnson, who was really struggling with his facial expressions and what does I do with my hands. He wants the money for Ukraine. The rest of his caucus is not letting him do that. So I think that's where that came from. But they clearly are paying attention to their internal polling and the conversations that Americans are having about how important the everyday bread and butter issues are. Biggest applause lines, protecting Social Security lowering prescription drug prices. Let's give teachers a raise. Let's oh. make sure that kids... Oh, we'll yeah. go through that. Yeah, we will. Uh, let's make sure that kids know how to read by third grade. Seems really fault good. for that. <laughs> yeah. it but it's still... Well, first of all, it's not Joe Biden that's at fault for that. Kids teachers were falling unions. about... I, listen, I've been plenty critical of Randy Weingarten, but it's still something that Americans want, that they want our public mm -hmm. schools to serve kids in a good way. Or to Lifting kids out of poverty. The Republicans got rid of the child tax credit. That was something that eliminated po uh, poverty by huge amounts. Those are unifying issues for the American public, and that's why it got, is getting so much praise. Okay. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.